Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. In today's video, we're going to talk about spot welding. Now, sometimes when people hear the word spot welding, they immediately think of this. Now, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube call that spot welding, but it really isn't. It's tack welding. And tack welding is something that you use with the MIG, TIG, or stick process just to kind of get your pieces put together where you can take them apart if you have to. If you're not satisfied with how everything lines up, you can break the tacks. Spot welding is a completely different process, and it comes in handy for thinner metals like this. This is a stainless steel holster that I'm currently making for a client, and uh, I need quite a few of them. And this entire piece is spot welded together. Let me show you what I did. Okay guys, this is the current project I'm working on. I am making a series of aerosol can holders that uh, connect through a belt loop. And uh, basically what this is for, a uh, buddy of mine works at a car wash and they use a window cleaning spray that goes into an aerosol can and you know they're putting them in their pockets or in their, um, their jacket pockets and they drop the cans and you know it just doesn't really look presentable. So they wanted something that they could wear on their hip that looked like it was supposed to be there. So we came up with this design and uh, we made it out of all stainless steel. I believe this is 304 stainless and it's nice because it won't rust in the uh, environment with all the water, especially being around a car wash. Uh, the only thing that we're going to do after we reach this point, we're going to sandblast the entire thing, make sure all the edges are completely smooth, and then cover these two hoops in a cloth tape so that way if um, they accidentally brush up against the car or, uh, or something like that, they're not going to scratch the paint, they're not going to damage the finish. So the first step in making this particular holster is assembling the two hoops. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, guys, so here are the two pieces that make up the hoop. Uh, it's one straight piece. And this is just the strip of stainless steel. I bent the ends in the brake. <clears throat> and then uh, wrap this around a pipe just to get the initial shape. This will be spot welded into the back. And then after everything's all welded together, if I have to make adjustments to the hoop itself, I can put it on the anvil and just hit it down with a hammer and that'll give me the, uh, the dimensions that I'm looking for to accommodate the can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the back where I want it. I'm just going to hold it with a pair of ice grips. I'm going to put it inside the tongs, press down, and hit the switch. Now as soon as you let off the switch, the power shuts off and the current stops. But as you can see, see if I can get the light, that little divot and the discoloration is the spot weld. So when I take the vice grips off, it's going to stay there. Now I'm going to put three little spot welds on each of these because I really want them to be durable. Um, I don't want them to come apart for any reason, so you know it's better to be safe than sorry. So I'm going to do the next piece the next weld on this side. Clamp it down. Hold it for a few seconds. See if that held. There you go. Now I'm going to put this aside to cool and then I'm going to do the other two welds top and bottom uh, in the next process. All right, the next piece we need to make in the assembly is basically the spine. Uh, that consists of the loop for the belt, and we have to put a bend in it for the bottom of the can, so that'll catch the can so it doesn't fall out the bottom. Um, this is all basically done on a brake, and uh, that's what it looks like. There needs to be a weld here, and then the two hoops will be welded onto the back afterwards. Okay, guys, here's the spine. Um, it's a strip of stainless steel that's been rolled over and there's a step in it and that step is going to be welded to the bottom of the frame so it's going to be completely sealed and uh, there's a 90 degree bend or so in the bottom so the can doesn't slip through the hoops. Now, I know some of you are thinking, God, that's huge for a belt loop. Uh, what are these guys wearing for belts? 
Uh, why I have this set up this way, um, if they're jumping in and out of cars, cleaning the tops of dashboards or the windshields, I wanted it to have a little bit of play in it so it has movement as they're getting in, sitting in the seat, getting up. Um, it makes it more comfortable. It's not going to immediately jam into their sides because these guys are at this eight hours a day. Uh, so what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run three tacks, uh, excuse me, three spot welds across the back and uh, I'm going to let it cool off and then do the next process. Okay guys, with the help of my vice grips, I've got this centered on the spine where I want it. I'm going to weld the first hoop on. So I'm going to put my first spot right in the center. There we go. Now this does get pretty hot. I am able to hold on to it with my hand because there is some distance between the weld and it is relatively concentrated. And I don't know how well you can see it, but I've got three welds across the top, three welds down each side for the hoop, and then five welds holding the hoop to the spine. So the only thing to do now is let this cool and then I'll come back and I'll weld the lower hoop on. Okay guys, I got the lower hoop on just like I had the first with the vice grips. Go ahead and spot this. Now these vice grips are going to get real hot right about now. And even with the weld that close to the tips, they come right off. So let me finish this up. Oops. Now some places are harder to get into than others, especially with these big jaws. But they do make a series of different types of arms. Um, ones that can allow you more access to tighter spots, ones that can give you uh, a deeper throat so you can put a bigger piece of material in. Um, there are quite a few options for a lot of the different spot welders that are out there. This is going to be hard to get the last two on. But Angle it a little bit. And there you go. All right, guys, so there you go. Uh, I am going to be making quite a few of these. I've got an order for about 20 of them. Uh, and that's only for the first couple of car washes. Hopefully it'll pan out into something bigger, uh, which I'm pretty sure it will, like I said before. It should uh, be pretty nice. But uh, that's the spot welding process and my spot welder is limited to one eighth total thickness. So in other words if you have your two materials when you put them together it should not be any thicker than one eighth. At one eighth you're push pushing the maximum capacity of what this spot welder can do. Um, obviously if you want to spend a ton more money you can get spot welders that can weld up to a half inch thick. Uh, but I used those only in aerospace companies and they were really expensive water cooled units that uh, were about 440 volt uh, panels, so um, you know, you get what you pay for. But uh, I have to admit, this spot welder is good for what it is, and it is getting the job done. And speaking of getting the job done, I've got a lot more work to do, and I really need to get going. But it's been good. I'm glad you guys took the time to come and hang out with me, see another video, and uh, hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, I'll be uh, able to make some more. I've got the new high definition camera. Uh, we just hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. Really want to thank you guys for hanging out on the channel and taking an interest in what we're doing. Uh, just hit 400,000 channel views this month too, so uh, we're really moving along. But uh, it's time for me to move along to the next job. So for now, this is Jeff at Darkman Metals, and we'll see you again.